Hello everyone, today we are going to look at normalization and we will find out why it's important to normalize, for example, your player's inputs. So, um, to understand the whole thing, let's, let's see uh, what our actual problem is. So, if I want to go from A to B, right? So, for example, if we are in a 2D game, if you want to go from this A point to this B point, so A is in 0, 0, and B is in, in a 1, 0. So, you would do this by holding the um, left key, which in most games is D. But what if you want to go to the C point? You would need to hold uh, W and D. But that's gonna get a bit uh, complicated and we're gonna see why i'll also create a d point here which will be at zero one right there so that indicates the vertical motion right and i'll make it also show the value like that okay so I will also create some segments and show the distances between points because obviously the distance from A to D is 1 and also to A to B. But if we just take these values, so like if we construct our code so that um, no matter what direction we go, we just add 1 to the corresponding direction and the uh, component of the vector. Because if your vector is, um, so if you're mo moving to the right, you would be saying that, um, for example, this vector gets uh, the like vector that's right, if you're speaking in Godot terms. So that would be 1, 0, right? Just to get the idea through. And... If you just do this in your code for all the four directions, um, that is not going to work because this distance between A and C is not the same as between AD and AB. And I'm actually going to show you what these distances are. So I just connect these two uh, points. Actually, I'll also get a segment over here and over there and here so uh let's get the distance uh here as well so these are one right both of these distances but now if i place it between a and c we got a strange value it's uh 1.4 you're gonna see this is a weird number and so to find out what that is um we can actually use the Pythagorean theorem to figure this entire thing out because if we connect the rest of our lines so let's say between B and C and uh, C and B you're gonna see that the, this forms a square shape and therefore these oh what am I doing these sides so this side between AD and the side between BC, they are equal to each other. And same goes for AB and CD. So by using the Pythagorean theorem, now that we know all sides equal one unit, and this is a right angle. Oh, that's not the best thing. Okay. If this is a right angle, then we can say that a squared plus b squared of well, b squared <laughs> equals c squared. And so in this case, um, these two sides are a and b, and c is the side facing the right angle in this uh, formula. So this means 1 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared. And 
1 to any any exponent is going to be 1. So this is 1 plus 1 equals c squared. Therefore, 2 equals c squared. And if you take the... Whoa, what is up? If you take the square root of that, then c is going to be approximately... We're going to find out. If I type uh, in 2 and say under the square root, you're going to see we're getting... Uh, this long strange value and if you look at the first digits they are actually equal to what you're seeing as the estimation of this distance so i'm just gonna say c approximately equals to 1.41 and we can also say that c equals the square root of 2 to make it easier to work with so then, where could the um, correct point be where we want to end up if we um, go into both directions, both up and right? And feel free to think about this. Uh, this is going to be interesting. So if you thought that it would be at the place where these two lines intersect, this is actually not correct. I move this label away a bit. So if you thought that would be this point where we're supposed to end up, that's not correct. And the reason for that is the BD line, it intersects with AC so that they basically meet at their half, halfway points, right? And if you take the half of this number, this is not going to be one. Basically, our, our objective is to move one unit in this distance or uh, sorry in this direction and if you take the half of this number which is a prox which is uh, not approximate but exactly here right this point that is gonna be um two under the square root divided by two which is 0 0.7 something right so that is not the solution. So this is where normalization comes in. Because if we just take our inputs like this, then our multidirectional vector input is going to be 1, 1. But if we normalize that, this is the... Um, technique is this is what the technique is called normaliz normalization if you do that basically we say that the new vector a normal normalized vector denoted with n is gonna be every component as before but we are dividing the components by the length of the vector Just like that. And if you take the length of the vector, so we have, we have a formula that goes like under the square root. We take the x component, place it to the second, second exponent, and also take the first component and do the same thing. And this is what our uh, length is going to be and the reason why we are actually um, raising it to a square root is is to eliminate the negative signs right because we don't want negative uh, um, units when we are working with distances because there is no negative distance but essentially now if I move this a bit This is going to be 1 plus 1 under the square root. So our length is the square root of 2. Looks similar, right? But hang on. Because now if we plug this number in, our vector is going to be 
1 divided by the square root of 2 on the x, and 1 divided by the square root of 2 once again on the y. And if we check what this is, Then we're getting this number again, right? The the one we have also seen earlier on, which was basically a distance from A to this middle intersection point. But um, what we need to know is basically now we are going to be moving um, this many units on both components. So it's like if I move here and I say that we move somewhere around 0.7 right on both axes this is gonna be somewhere around here and I don't know somewhere around here and then if we connect these dots we're gonna end up approximately there so just to prove this right now we can check the length of this normalized vector so let's write up this formula again this is going to be uh, one divided by the square root of two, two raised to the second power and we could say multiplied by 2, because um, both components, both x and y, equal to the same value. So if you do the calculation, and then say raise it to the second power, this is going to be 0 0.5 times 2. And that's going to be 1 under the square root, which is 1. And so... We basically arrived to our destination. This is the whole point of normal normalizing, because doing this, we can reduce any vector so that its length is not bigger than one. And this allows us to work with scalar values pretty well. And therefore, it is also important in player motion. And there's another way to prove this. So we know that, um, if you have a vector of x and y, we know that we want, want it so that x equals y, because we want to mo move uh, the same amount in both directions, essentially. You know, because if that wasn't true, then our movement would not be even. So, what we want, again, in different terms, is that the length of our vector should be 1. So, this V vector should be 1, the length of it. And we also want x to equal to y so if we write this up then we can just say we want two of the same values right i'm gonna say that we'll use i to just indicate the same value in other terms we could say that the length of v vector equals something under the square root and that's going to be 2 times i squared. So, since this is, this is a multiplication between 2 and i squared under the square root, we can actually take these components out one by one and separate them like that. And then we can do something interesting. And so the proof for this is like if you if you look at four times twenty five, 
which is a hundred, right? Well, that's not the greatest hundred I've ever thrown. Like that. Then you can separate this, such as square root of four and square root of 25. And this is going to be two times five, right? Same result. So if you go back here, anything under the square root, if it is on the second exponent, then this will just equal to itself. Like if you take the square root of nine, that's going to be three. So here we basically have the square root of two times i. Now if we divide both sides by the square root of two, we're going to get the exact same number that we had gotten with the previous approach. And there we go. Okay, so I got this quick uh, simulation code here that will depict the default scenario that I described throughout the video where we do not normalize the move direction. So if I launch the game, above the Godot logo, you will see our update um, from compared to the previous frame. So if I move sideways, you're going to see we get this uh, weird value, which is the square root of 2. But if I say to the position I will add the normalized quantity of that, we are roughly getting 1. Of course, this is just um, the uh, rounding issue of floats, but you get the idea. You're basically getting 1 again by doing the normalization and... As you can see, scaling the vector to unit length is equivalent to vector divided by the vector's length. Essentially the thing we have been doing here to, to prove this entire thing. So if you do input management like this, make sure to normalize it. However, in the input class there's a get vector function which will just do this heavy lifting for us and now if we look at its documentation you can see that um, it's going to normalize it as well because the vector has its length limited to one as it is saying here in this area that I've highlighted so this is already normalized right we can normalize it again, it's it's not gonna change anything really. So yeah, I hope you get the idea behind this entire thing. And if you found this video useful and interesting, please consider liking and also subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.